Okay, so Dan Frid is the client success manager. There's a good use of language. Indeed. It's good to have success in your job title. For <laughs> it saves you having any. <laughs> for Europe, for Edelweiss, perhaps you could tell me, uh, Dan, uh, a bit about Edelweiss, just to, to kick this off. Uh, of course. So Edelweiss was founded 20 years ago by John Rubin, um, who is still our CEO of the company. He worked with his mother. His mother had a bookshop. He was always frustrated by the fact that booksellers, independent booksellers specifically, couldn't uh, make use of their collective knowledge um, on, a, on a platform. So he developed something called Above the Tree Line, uh, and we're still called Edelweiss by Above the Tree Line. We've, we've just gone through a bit of a rebranding. But he developed Above the Tree Line, which so the idea is that you get above all the trees and you start to see the bigger picture. What bigger picture? The bigger bookselling picture. So booksellers have a huge amount of uh, knowledge, but also uh, information from, from their sales from their, what they're stocking, what they're ordering. Right. Uh, and John saw this and thought uh, we can collectively make a system that uh, uses that data and gives everybody a shared benefit from that data. So it takes sales, ordering and stock holding, uh, or inventory you'd call it in America. <laughs> I always make that mistake with American booksellers. So th they take those three bits of information and then turn it around um, and give it back to bookshops in a aggregate form so that takes the form at the moment in the, the the latest iteration of a pie chart that says these are the books that are selling well in all the other bookshops um, but these are the books that are selling well in all the other bookshops that you don't have or they're not selling well in your bookshop maybe you need to move them it's that sort of uh, information then, so it helps you fine-tune things and yeah. Im obviously improve yeah. your sales and reduce your costs. Exactly. And, right. and then there's lots of data splicing you can do. So you could say, well, I don't care about all of it. Um, I just sell uh, social and well-being books. So you can filter. You can say, right, I don't, I don't care. I just want to see social. I just want to see biographies. I just want to see fiction. I just want to see comics and manga. I just, yeah, you can just kind of limit what you're viewing. I just want to see, so in America, you'd do regions like Northwest or uh, Southeast or whatever. So it helps you understand your market than it can. Yeah, like, uh, exactly. what are they interested in? Exactly. And that's, that's even more important now with things like, uh, you know, the, so you can specialize in... LGBTQ books or political bookshops mm -hmm. or Christian bookshops. It, you don't want to look at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. You want to look at a lot more focused. So that's where it started. John brought in, or well, the team brought in, I should put it all on John's head, brought in publishers and publishers started putting their catalogues on our platform. Uh, um, so just to wind up uh, back a bit, mm. uh, the information... This is voluntarily given by all of the independent bookstores. Yes. Is that it? Yeah, and exactly. The re and the way, the reason that they would tell you what their sales are is because they want to learn what everyone's absolutely. Sales. So that yeah. that's yeah. the incentive for them to participate. Yes, yes, okay. indeed. Right. Um, and and the great thing about the book industry is most of us use uh, point of sale systems that. Uh, what do you mean that, by that? Uh, stock control. So your till system but w would normally be your stock control system as well. So inventory control. <laughs> In what America, there's maybe 30 bookseller-specific stock control systems, and we integrate with all of them in order to uh, get that data in. Okay, okay. so they would just uh, basically take, take a snapshot of it and flip it over to you? Yeah, every day get that information from... Roughly 700 bookstores in the US, uh, quite a few Canadian bookstores, um, most of the bookstores in the UK, uh, because we flipped the way we did it in the UK. What does that mean? So in America, booksellers found the true value in Edelweiss was 
being able to browse publisher catalogues, which was what I was coming on to, right. and do their buying in publisher catalogues. Um, so publishers can present their new titles for each month, um, and a bookseller can go in and uh, use the tool to work with their reps to buy with a more informed buying decision. So the publisher will give us their data, but we'll bring in the analytics data, we'll bring in awards data, we'll bring in Goodreads data. Uh, we bring it all into one buying screen. Um, we bring in information on how a similar title did in your store as well. So if a new mm. bestseller comes out by a popular author, you can look at their sales for the other authors. And um, this is all free? Uh, so in the US, it is paid for by the bookstores. They pay a subscription. Oh, well, they do. Um, okay. th sorry, for the analytics. The analytics. Everything else in Adelweiss is free, yes. Yeah. Which basically means... All the publishers' catalogs. Yes, I yes. see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All of that is free. The ability to create your own catalogs as a bookshop is free. So um, you would then put your own catalog together and email it out to your yeah, client base. We do that all the time in our shop as well. Um, so because you brands, have a sh uh, you do. have a shop. I do. And I what's have, the name of your shop? Our shop is called Book Bugs and Dragon Tales, and it's in Norwich in England. Okay. And we've been going three and a half years, so we opened about seven months before COVID hit. But nice. we're still there. And yeah. my wife runs our shop, Leanne. I, so I work from the basement of our shop, and so I get all the benefits of uh, co-owning a bookshop, but I don't actually do much of the work in the bookshop, I can't, apart from every now and again poking my nose in. But yeah, I have an office in the shop. We have quite a large, for a UK bookshop, we're quite a large bookshop. Compared to American bookshops, well, we're nothing. But what, so, what does that mean? We're, we're so large. What we're large. That? So we're two hundred two thousand so two thousand square feet. Okay. I don't know what that equates to in meters, but it's it's, feet, it's a decent size. Yeah. We've got five, six rooms if you include my office. Seven actually, if you include the store. Anyway, we've got lots of rooms. And how, many, how many titles all together? Uh, roughly six and a half thousand individual titles. Okay. Um, we do have one of our rooms is an event space, so we don't have any books in there. We just have multimedia equipment and seating and things like that. Mm. So okay. not on this. I went to a bookshop in Seattle a couple of weeks ago mm. and they had a full theatre. It was just amazing and the dream. And that is actually our dream. That's when we were thinking about what we wanted from a bookshop. We wanted a, a performance space. We wanted to bring our love of theatre into the shop and our love of... Um, being able to deliver, you know, creative writing, poetry, that sort of thing, but specifically to children. Yeah. We went on a tangent there, didn't we? We did, but it's, <laughs> it, it's interesting in the sense that bookstores are, you know, are, are much more than just selling books. Oh, yes. These days. Be, yes. Yeah. Or at least the, the successful ones. Yeah, it's rare you find a, an independent bookstore yeah. that isn't doing something else within its community and mm -hmm. giving something back to its community and that might be the individual passion of the bookseller which is what I love because that's what makes us all unique or you know events bringing in amazing authors yeah mm -hmm. there's there's a whole host of ways supporting local businesses and and creating community groups and it, it's a wonderful thing to, yeah. to be able to go to a, another store and see how they're benefiting their community um, it's very rare you get to a bookstore and they're just selling books that you yeah. do get them they, they yeah. are you know but you're quite lucky if you're in an area that you can just do that right. I say lucky my heart wouldn't be in no. just selling books my heart okay. is in everything else we can do for, um, for, for spe specifically kids kids who wouldn't have access to books normally that that's where our our dream is because we were working class kids from um, a poor estate and books got both of us out of that uh, or, you know almost inevitability of the cycle of poverty so. let's look at that then mm. uh, how did books get you out of the cycle of poverty well just it gave us it gave it widened our world so it gave us an idea that there was something else rather than than what manual labor no, no, I, I don't even think it's a job thing. I think it's a, an aspirational thing. Hmm. And, that, and it's not career. It's about creating happiness for yourself or, or following a dream rather than following a path. 
that was set by your parents or your parents' parents in a cycle. And there's a lot. There's a lot of children and a lot of grown ups that are doing what their parents did and and uh, and actually they, that makes our parents sound terrible uh, our parents gave us that opportunity to get into the wider world and they did that by what taking to the library well my mum worked at a library so uh, but was a huge reader she actually pulled her hair out about me because I didn't read as much as I could have done when I was uh, younger like m maybe my sort of teenage years but I was always around books they were always in my life I spent my life at the main library in Norwich before it burnt down um, <laughs> when was that? Uh, it burnt down in 1994 and what they built a big they, beautiful they, new they one they did Millennium yeah. Library so they built it for, for 2000 and it is beautiful it's a proper community forum space but let's get back to you yes. as a kid then so and your aspirations so what what happened uh, after you spent all that time in the library then well i went to university in leicester and london i developed a love of theater um a, a love of travel as well but I, I suppose my route then into books again uh was was not you know not because of a love of books really it was because I uh, was uh, an IT, I, I worked in IT. With who? Uh, a trainer in a book wholesaler called Bertrand Books, which unfortunately closed at the beginning of COVID. And what do they do? They, so they're a book did. wholesaler. Yeah. Uh, they, my role in the company was as a, what well, started off as tech support for the book selling software that they developed, Till Software, um, Point of Sale. So again, what is that exactly? It was called Bertline. Uh, it was a system that the wholesaler developed. This happens a lot in the industry. The wholesaler develops a system that in, that helps the bookseller be a better bookseller um, and encourages them to buy books from the wholesaler. How it's does it a, help them be a better bookseller? By um, giving them giving them the tools that they need to be a bookseller. You can't just write down ISBNs when you sell them, you know, right. you need to be able to scan them, you need to then be able to see what you've sold in a day and, and decide whether you want to reorder it and have the information about how well it's sold before to reorder it and uh, be able to see, look up a book and customer order it and know that that customer order is going to come in and the customer is going to be informed that the book's in without you getting your mobile phone out and texting them. Right. And it so it automates all of, all of it this. It automates all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. It gives you the, the paperwork you need to record the customer's order. So your customers are happier. Um, lots of stock control, returns, that sort of thing. Um, there are systems all over America that do the same thing. Most of them are privately uh, developed, I think possibly all of them now actually. And then there's systems still going in the UK. There are four main systems in the UK, and then there's ones all. So I've been speaking to booksellers today, and there's a Polish system, and there's a, you know, a lot of the wholesalers all over Europe are doing a similar thing, and it ties you in theoretically to the wholesaler uh, to encourage you to buy the books from them. Uh, and theoretically, the I mean, you look for a a wholesaler that's got the broadest possible choice of books right? yes. in, in their yeah. warehouse. It, uh, yeah, that helps, but also your discount is uh, quite a key factor. Your returns allowance is quite a key factor. Your deliveries, are, they, are the boxes coming broken and damaged? Yeah, there are, there are a range of factors and just your relationship with them as well. Right. You know, if you can right. phone them up and have a conversation with someone, then that makes a big difference. And how many are there right now then? In the UK, there are four main bookseller specific systems. So Bertline, sorry, it's now called Batchline, Guardlink, Booksolve and Merlio. Uh, people also use Square, but not, not many in the UK as booksellers. And in the US, I couldn't even count. Oh, there's, there's, there's many. Yeah, there, there, there were a lot. Um, and I wouldn't like to name one because no, I'd no, forget I another one. Understood. But, <laughs> but so these are, these are software programs. Yeah, exactly. You would pay for these ones in, in America. But you don't pay for them in... You in generally the... pay, but they're heavily subsidised by... Uh, so. Batchline, which was the one I worked on when it was Bertline, 
uh, that's subsidised uh, by the Booksellers Association, I believe, or it's certainly not as expensive as um, as it could be. Um, as other ones are? As Well, so it's uh, there's a difference in scale. So American booksellers will pay more for their software, but their shops are bigger and they've got higher turnover and, and staff and, and things like that. So they do pay more from what I've seen, but also... Um, you know the scale is there so that they can whereas in the UK often bookshops have one employee two employees you know they're much smaller scale yeah so if you start paying you know a large chunk and historically they haven't had to because they were subsidized by the wholesaler so you can't just suddenly charge too much for um, for because they wouldn't use it because they'd flip to another wholesaler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do, do yeah. They, Certainly when there were two wholesalers, that would be the case. They were both kept very low priced so that you would be on their system and buying the books from them. And that was what it was all about, was we want the books to be bought from us, so, so we'll give you this amazing bit of software that... Takes care of everything yeah, for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So how many book wholesalers are there now then in, in the UK? Yeah. Um, so Bertram's closed. Uh, there's Gardner's. There's Ingram have, have just kind of announced that they're, they've got a, a wholesale platform and they do print on demand there as well. Um, and then there are, there are other ones. Um, but those are the two big ones. They're the two big ones that the main, that UK use. There's Book Speed in Scotland as well. I don't know if you'd count the Welsh Book Council, which is um, a Welsh... Yeah, they, they deal with the Welsh language books, basically. Okay. Yeah. So, say, gardeners then, you would you would say, OK, I'm going to take... Do they offer this software? Gardlink, yes. No, uh, it's... Uh, was it Gardeners? So Gardeners have Gardlink as their oh, stock control I see. system. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and then you, you go into that, you're kind of not locked in, but you, you, you don't want to change around, and you yeah. and that's where you're going to get the, the majority of your yeah, books from. Yeah, it makes it easier to get your books from, you know, the, the, the path of least resistance is to get your books from the wholesaler that your system is developed yeah. by. Yeah. But no, they're they're open systems, so you can order from a publisher or um, or something direct, else. Yeah. if you wish. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting that they're they're starting to cut each other's grass a little mm. bit now. Yeah. Why why is that happening now? What so what do you mean by? Well, what I mean is you say that uh, you say that Ingram's is is coming into oh, the British yeah. market and, the and Gardner's, Gardner's is going into the American. Yep. What, what's that all about? Well, I suppose they see it as a. You know, a, an area to expand into. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't and why know didn't it happen before? I wonder. Um, Gardeners, no, sorry, Ingram have always had a a platform here, uh, but it was all print on demand. Gardeners have had a, I think, a media kind of arm in the states. What does that mean, media? Arm? So, like, uh, I think, I think, I might be wrong here, but I think I like a non-book distribution centre. So, not books, because they, they also do records and okay. games and all sorts of other things I as see. well you can, yeah. you can, and media being you know that yeah that, yeah. yeah yeah sorry that's different what mediums yeah. Of, yeah right okay yeah. You studied IT, IT uh, yeah, com- yeah, computers yeah yeah, yeah. well you, I didn't study IT at university I decided I started my working life as an accountant Okay. And I thought, I do not want to be an accountant. I don't right. want to do all the tests. I don't want to study. I don't want to do any of that. I'll change to IT. And then I didn't go straight to the book industry. I, I did maybe seven years at a promotional um, like distribution prizes company thing. Okay. And uh, that's where I learned sort of technology and uh, coding and stuff like that. I I'm not a developer, but I, I, I learned some code and enough to get by and that sort of thing and then yeah I just wanted another job at one point you know I was fed up with the company I worked for or they were closing or something happened so um, I, I got a job at a book wholesaler it wasn't because they were a book wholesaler it no, was just because was I a needed job. a job yeah and it was in Norwich I was traveling an hour before that to um, to get to my work so yeah everything was was good about it and I haven't looked back since I, that just discovered it was quite early on in my career there that I discovered that 
in order to communicate better with my bookshop customers, because I was speaking to bookshops all day long, technical support. Yes. I discovered that actually I like to read books and talk to them about books because that's what they love talking about and that's how to give them better service. So, and I remember the book very specifically that I picked up and I read and it was um, Barbara Kingsolver's The Lacuna, which is fairly highbrow, not really highbrow, but it's, you know, it's yeah. got some some uh, great themes and po- politics and things I'm really interested in. And then I had a conversation with uh, a very, very highbrow bookshop in London called John Sandoz. Um, and he's still the he's still the owner there. I, I, I love heard him to such good things about oh, it's him. It's an amazing. Bookshop. I have to get it's to an him. Amazing bookshop. Yes, it's got something like thirty thousand books, and there that is just the knowledge of the booksellers there. Anyway, so um, I start. I talked to him about the lacuna, and I could clearly see he was surprised that I read. Right. <laughs> and, well, uh, I cheat people. Yeah, maybe they read yeah. sci-fi, well, but I, and I don't. I, he wasn't not in a condescending way, but I, he was very um, happy to talk books with me. And and that that moment, and I've told him that he changed my life. Uh, but that moment was uh, was the moment where I discovered that books were again. You know, after quite a long hiatus, having five kids probably didn't help. But uh, <laughs> what haven't you done? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so wow. so yeah, then I really started. Like I, re- I got it at that point. I got it. I got what bookshops were about. I got what. And what are they about then? They're about a conversation. They're about people. They're about opening up your world, and they're about um, they're about sharing stories. And yeah, they're about people. They're about um, connection and yes yeah, they, they just they, it gets you it really gets you and and uh, so I've spent the last 20 no 15 years being in bookshops and learning from bookshops and having the best conversations with people around the world I've been very lucky in my career that I've got to travel yeah okay so you were in IT providing yeah. support services mm-hmm. And you had a conversation with John... Mm, well, it was John Sando Books, yeah, but it's Johnny. Then what did you do? So I started... So I was text, but I was on a phone, basically, yeah. most of the time. And then I started going out to bookshops uh, and installing the system that I supported. And right. then I started going and doing stock takes with... Uh, so inventory counts. So you count all the books in the shop um, and get it right on the system. So I started going out and doing that. Which, of um, course, exposes you to all sorts of titles. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and all of the staff in the shop will be there for that as well. Um, so you're and, connected with them. And Yeah, and there's plenty of time at that point to start learning about what matters to a bookshop because you're not just counting books the whole time. You're talking about the issues that they're facing with the software a lot of the time, but also, you know, with with the problems that they have with certain publishers or... But delivery times and yeah, such. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, the issues they have with their customers and what works and what doesn't in a bookshop. What does work and what doesn't work. <laughs> well, that, well that's, a, that's another podcast. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and, and, and I clearly haven't figured it out because our bookshop isn't soaring. It's, you know, it's a wonderful place and we win lots of awards. But, you know, we still struggle uh, every month, you know, it's not Yeah, that we're, well, it's not, it's not have, designed to make a huge money, no, is it? No, it's no, the, the margins are tight and... Very yeah. few booksellers are in it for the yeah. money and very few booksellers are uh, going to ever end up, you know, rich from the, from yeah. the back of it. Okay. Uh, we do it because we love it. I'm very lucky that I have a wonderful job uh, in the book industry that still sees me going into bookshops the whole time but pays the bills, and and that's really important that we've got that foundation. Um, okay, but, so you were going out, and then, and then what happened? So I did leave the book industry for two years. Um, Bertram Books, uh, after Kit Bertram sold them, before I got there, but it had a sequence of bad owners who uh, didn't really invest in the company, basically. 
Um, right. So I got fed up with that and I left and I went to work for marinas uh, or marina management software, so boats coming and going instead of books coming and going. Huh. And I used to travel the world installing that in different marinas. It's funny, it's like you're IT yeah. and yet you you're, yeah. the job sounds terrific. I know, Because you're actually going out and yeah. you're, you're not being like a nerdy no. IT guy, you're no, talking no, no. to people. And, and I, I do think that's the unique position... So it's quite a unique thing to be into IT, but also not want to sit in a darkened room and type right. code. You well, know? and <laughs> having the two ch- types of demeanors, mm. really, right? Yeah. You yeah, have you to have, focus yeah, on yeah, yeah. zeros and ones, <laughs> yeah. plus you connect with people. Yeah. Yeah, You. I mean, I don't, ha- I don't code, but I have an understanding of what a coder can do. It's almost like an interpre- interpreter, I suppose, um, okay. in that sense. So uh, I have an understanding of what's possible. So I can take an idea from a bookseller and I can translate it to a project manager and, and yeah, we can get there. Anyway, marinas, big yachts all over the place, glamorous. You'd think this was the, the job made in heaven. You know, I was I was traveling around doing that, right. but it was hellish. And, and well, it, it was well, hellish because I didn't believe in the software okay. specifically, right. um, whereas I'd always believed in what I was doing before. But I'd get, I'd get to a... And also the clients were not booksellers. They were, you know, yeah. yacht people. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm sure most yacht people are lovely. but They just... read uh, beach novels mostly. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't, that's, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. that's snobbish or whatever the word is. Coffee table books. <laughs> I don't know. It just didn't have the heart that the book selling yeah. world had, With, and the heart being what the the heart being the rich uh, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. And the feeling that you're, if you're running a bookshop, you're sharing ideas about the world, and yeah. and yeah. if you're run if you're running a marina, people are going off and exploring the world. Wonderful, but it's only a. One percent or two percent, you know, it's not about the community and about. It's not a six ninety nine paperback that you can just pick up and explore the world. It's, I've never thought of it like that, but I think I think it's quite a good analogy. The, the the people that I would be working with, not working with in the company, but work, you know, training, that just had a different um, perspective on. On things, I think. Well, they were I don't just, know, the, but I think that they're they actually, business people. It's unfair. Right? It's it, that is unfair. They just had. I tell you what, they had. They had very high expectations. They were, you know, multinational companies. You know, huge marina organisations. Yeah. And they had very high expectations of the level of the software, and and I didn't believe I was delivering. Yeah. A good enough product that, to that's, them. That's and huge, a good enough service. Yeah. Believing yeah, in it. Yeah. yeah. So Bertram Books got a new managing director and uh, brought me back. So specifically asked me to come back, which was amazing. So yeah. that's my phone. No problem. Oh, can I just... Yeah, yeah, just... yeah no problem. Hannah? Oh. Yeah. Could... Uh, well, right, okay, so I'm still in my room. Could, can we just go there together when I'm done? I'm, I'm just doing a podcast. Yeah. Wonderful. We'll do that. Lovely. Bye. Bye. Just Hannah Gold, famous author, phoning me up. <laughs> I've I've developed a love. We're gonna have her. to leave that in. <laughs> Definitely gonna leave that in. Um, yeah, it's been a, a joy of this weekend is getting to know one of my favourite authors. She does a, an amazing children's book too, yeah. and she's just publishing a third. And you just met her this weekend, and now uh, she's, now no, she's uh, calling you up. She, so we, <laughs> uh, she did come to the shop, right? Um, and that's when we first. Oh, met. she did reading, or she, no? She just popped in. I think oh. she was at the local chain bookshop. Oh, I see. So she popped in because she's the sort of author that finds any bookshop when and she signed some of her books. Yeah. Did she? Or? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. great. That's and we good. we got on, and then uh, another great bookseller, Helen from Wonderland Bookshop arranged a WhatsApp group with us and her and, and a couple of other booksellers from the UK and Ireland. So we've been in a little thing together. Nice. Uh, and then, yeah, we just really bonded and she's, right. she's a lovely person. 
they've mostly got the same motivation as as the booksellers, that love of stories and that love of or or just getting a message out to, about to the how world. to make the world a better yeah. place or yeah, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, we're sounding quite sentimental. <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, so Bertrams. Bertrams, then. yes. So they brought me back. Yeah. And immediately, I felt like I was elevated. Because of I, the company that you were in, is that it? Because of the belief company. that the managing director and David, who's, who was actually here this weekend, he, he now works for another company in the book industry too. What's anyway, his name? David Pagnum, yeah, he works for Ingram. Okay. Um, but they their belief in me and they wanted to elevate my role, and they did. So they took me to New York, to the Book Expo, and actually on that trip... I went to Ann Arbor to be trained by Edelweiss, by Above the Tree Line, um, so that I could help integrate our systems. So that was my first proper introduction. What do you mean, integrate your systems? What's so, that? well, we had the Batch Line system and we integrated it with, sorry, Bert Line system, and we integrated it with Edelweiss so that the data sharing could happen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you could open up the the, the analytics yeah, for both exactly England and the states. Yeah, yeah. And what we did in this, in the UK is we brought all of the Bertline customers into that uh, world in one go. So we just went right. We'll switch on this data sharing and bring them all in, and then um, bring you know. Which is very useful, isn't it? If yeah. the if a book. St- kicks off in the States, mm. you, you're, if you're in England, you get to see how... Well, you know, how it, no, it is market divided, so right. you know, you'd only see... And you can look at the, the States, but, but, but most just, people stay within the UK because there are different editions for the States and the UK. No, no, understood, but it doesn't that give you an idea of what, what's popular? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah what, absolutely. And, and again, gives you intelligence. Yeah, that is one of the things when I'm doing my buying for our shop... Yeah. that I look for is has it got lots of attention from yeah. the American yeah. like lots of reviews lots of yeah. yeah it's called much love in the in the, on the platform which is just like a review but just saying I love it rather than having to write anything so so yeah I definitely look at that um, I don't look at the American analytics to check on a book um, but no. I do look at the overall yeah traction that the book is getting right yeah anyway so I went to Ann Arbor and met the team there, and that was wonderful. That's where Border started off, you know. Yes, I think I yes. knew that. Rest Not around peace. anymore, yeah. No. <laughs> Although they are, they are in Australia, aren't they? I don't, I don't know. know, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then they sent me... <laughs> I started doing international installations of the software. So I, I did one in um, the Cayman Islands. Jesus, which is tough. Just the most amazing. It actually was tough. Because did you know was... it because you'd been to the marina or not? No, no, no. <laughs> although I did look at the marinas there. <laughs> okay. But, uh, so what again, what were you installing? I was installing the Bertline system. And that came off the back of a big conference that they sent me to in America with a great bookseller, uh, Mitch, who runs Books and Books. Yes, I know Mitch you know Kaplan. Mitch? I've yeah. uh, interviewed him. Oh, amazing. And he established the Miami Book, f- uh, or he was yeah. part of that yeah, group. Yeah, yeah. That- it's in a huge, uh, huge event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A wonderful bookseller who was a bookseller for about 20 years in the States moved to the UK and runs Bridport Bookshop. What's it called? Uh, it's actually called The Bookshop, Bridport, and she's called Antonia. She introduced me to Mitch and we got on really well and and then I showed him the software and he wanted it to try it in one of his stores and the Cayman Islands was a franchise, so... <laughs> I got to go somehow, but it well, was somebody hard. has to put it I in know, there. I know, I know. It was really hard work, and I, I, I think I booked like two days holiday on the end. Sure, didn't use them because I was still working in the shop trying to get it all right. Uh, they had hundred thousand lines, not all books. Like most of it was not books. Yeah, hundred thousand lines. And what, what does that mean again? So individual product lines. So, in what some monster store in the Cayman Islands? Yeah, it was it was big, and it's I mean, M- Mitch's. It was. It's not anymore. It's okay. uh, it was a franchise, but the the company that ran the corporation in on the island has taken it over. Okay, uh, but they're still using the software, as far as I know. Um, so it's lasted, which is good. Okay. But um, yeah, it was hard work, and I mean, I had a lovely walk to work along the beach, mm-hmm. uh, which I made sure I videoed and sent to my wife. 
<laughs> but yeah, that was that was difficult. But but I was in the Cayman Islands, so right. it's not. Right. And but then I've travelled. You know, did two installations in Rome. Went to uh, Marbella in Spain. Two in Holland. What happened to Bertram then? So well, yeah. So what eventually happened with Bertrams was another sale to a um, venture capitalist company. They shredded it basically. They right. took all the valuable bits out of it, bit by bit. What? What is it? How did they do that? So they sold the bits that they could sell. Like what? Uh, well, the, actually, um, Bertline was one of the bits that got sold. And they sold um, that? They sold that to the Booksellers Association, but Batch, which is a, a money-making arm of the Booksellers Association. In the States? Or in, in the England? UK. Yeah, in the UK. okay. okay. Uh, and various different bits, library services, and yeah, bit different bits. And then, so, well, I, I, yeah, I probably shouldn't say this on a recording, but they, they did some pretty bad things. They treated the staff really badly, right. which they're still paying like redu- redundancy payment that um, they should have paid at the time they're still they went to court and yeah, had to pay yeah, yeah. I, I'm okay. not because I left a month before this all happened uh, I um, okay I, yeah you went to Edelweiss yeah so when when I saw the writing on what, the wall what year was that sorry this was 2020 oh recent then. yeah recent. So, yeah it was Covid yeah it was okay. yeah it was when Covid happened okay. so the, yeah the writing was on the wall and I Sent, e- uh, sent an email to Ruth, uh, the managing director of A Device for Europe, saying, we, uh, we got on pretty well. <laughs> How about a job? And she didn't see the email. And so I, uh, I then saw her at the Scottish book conference. And I said, and, we, and we'd arranged to meet anyway, because we were going to talk about Bertline and uh, bookshops and A Device in Europe and all of that stuff. So we... we went for a meal and c- because she hadn't answered my email I thought I can't, I can't bring this up I'm not that pushy person that right. says um, but you know you've but, lost me though I'm not sure where we are right where now. are we so we're probably at about probably at about December 2019 before but, Bertrams went under but okay. when the when it was obvious it was going under okay and they're offering the soft what's the difference between them and Edelweiss Bertline or any stock control system right. does your management of your shop, um, your till, you know, prints receipts, um, okay. helps you reorder, all of that stuff. I see. Edelweiss is very much more about the bigger picture, uh, the publisher catalogues, the uh, the, yes. Uh, yes, the analytics see. of your uh, I see. You, the information. Yes, I see. So it's, yeah. it's sort of market intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Helping you to to to, to yeah. choose the books you want, yeah, whereas yeah. the other one's more accounting, yeah. basically. Yeah, exactly. I see. So we had things to talk about, right? Because you already knew all the client doing. base. Right? You had yeah, a good. Yeah, I'd been to Ann Arbor. You know, we 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 yeah, yeah we had a good relationship. Mm-hmm. I know what I was doing now. I was installing. Well, I was doing a stock take, I think, for a bookshop in um, Portobello in Edinburgh, okay. and, sh- and Ruth was in Glasgow, living in Glasgow. She oh. moved over from the States. We met, and I did say, did you get my email? And she said, no. What email? That's the thing about emails. Yeah, you well, can, and it can cause all sorts of yeah. bad feeling, yeah. can it? Yeah, if yeah. someone just, you think you're being snubbed, but uh-huh. actually you're not. Uh-huh. And, and particularly because I didn't want to send it from my Bertram's email account, which right. is the one she would have known. I sent it my, from my personal. And, uh, and then she read the email in front of me, <laughs> so that was good. <laughs> and then we worked together to find a role for me in the UK part of Edelweiss. And uh, John and Annie, uh, who were the, the... John and Annie Rubin, husband and wife team, who they're in Ann Arbor. Yeah. Or they were, actually. They've yeah. recently moved further west but uh, okay. not, not out of the state they're still in Michigan I believe okay anyway there is a service in England that was competing with Edelweiss no. before or no. is this fresh no, no, territory no, no. fresh you? fresh this is all fresh yeah that's yeah, exciting yeah. yes it was actually yeah yeah because so Edelweiss was in the UK um, but as I said we brought all of the bookshops in for the analytics and which was great because we all automatically had all of the bookshops in Edelweiss but really what Edelweiss is the best thing for is making an informed buying decision from a catalogue. 
Yes. So an electronic okay. catalogue. Right. And that, that wasn't happening in the UK. Bookshops didn't get that message because they thought it was all about this lovely pie chart that showed them the best-selling titles. They didn't understand that, hey, we get all the publisher's catalogs. Mm. By yeah. the way, I should tell you yeah. that I collect publisher sales catalogs <laughs> going you? back to the 20s oh, and, wow. and earlier. Oh, wow. Just, wow. Just oh, saying, I love that. Just saying. That's a niche little collection, it's niche. isn't it? It is niche, and I have been able to get them for a pretty pretty decent price. Though. Yeah. They're slowly going up, though. Yeah. But but anyway, yeah, they're oh, they're oh, love, they're wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I love I love going and I, and just the the language, of course, it's persuasive. Yeah, you know, at least that's the idea. Yeah, is to, to establish the value of yeah. these books in the you know in the minds of the booksellers. Yeah, right? I mean you could call that bullshit, but <laughs> but but you know it has to be realistic. They'll yeah. find out soon enough if, if it's yeah. true or not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah. so that's what you do then. You're your delivery, your delivery system, and the publishers pay you. Yeah, publishers pay us to be on our platform. They have a home page on our platform, and you can browse. And you're their a monopoly? No, I believe there are other services that right. are around. I don't. I couldn't name one. No, of course not. Um, but uh, no, no, I genuinely I couldn't <laughs> <Okay>. name one. <laughs> but you're right. I probably wouldn't name one. Um, yeah, there are so, and there are individual publisher platforms right. that, like yes. publishers, have developed to deliver their uh, catalogs in that yeah. in that same way. What about a publishers' associations? Do they provide that service? Uh, not no. as far as I know. Okay. I, I, okay. Yeah, I don't okay. know, and maybe on a less Utilitarian, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. way totalitarian. Totali- that was the word I was hoping I didn't say. Um, not yeah. So, so the the thing that makes Ada by so special, okay, is that we're always thinking about independent bookshops right. and how we can make it useful for independent bookshops. So, the the key thing for the rep meeting example with the catalogue in front of you and recording your order on a device right. is that when that meeting ends yeah. you're both going away and you're not going away with a piece of paper with some ISBNs written on it and numbers and, and all of that or even you know a spreadsheet or whatever is happening in a lot of cases and a lot of cases the bookseller has nothing yeah. at the end of that meeting they're just going to wait for the books to turn up and if they're just waiting for those books to turn up they can't do pre-orders for those books. They might reorder them accidentally from. Mm, sorry, from... sorry. What, what, <laughs> you, you have to have, you have as a bookseller. You you have to have some kind of record of the books that you've ordered. You would think, wouldn't you? Well, yes. So many don't prior to, prior to. So many don't. What do they, they just? They just they just put in an order up. and then. Uh huh. That happens in so many bookshops in the UK specifically. In the US. It's long since right, passed, that, right, right. so everybody uses Edelweiss. And so then what Edelweiss gives you is the tools to put it into your stock control system. So any of the American systems, and any of the UK systems, the French systems. So that integration, that final piece of the puzzle where I need to know that I've put that order to the publisher gets into your system, you can start allocating those orders to your customers and, and you're not going to order them again by mistake and you know that you've got signed right. copies coming and all of this. And plus, plus, as you say, the rep would have all this information. The rep, exactly. They'd have the yeah. the books there so it's kind yeah. of transparent and yeah, written yeah. down. Yeah. And there's no competition. Well, as far as I know, no. No wonder you've got a smile I think I'd know. Face. I think I'd know, yeah. And so right now... Here we're in Prague at the mm. Rise uh, Book Selling yeah, Conference. Yeah. The first one they've had. Well, the first one. Yeah, of this first one. Country. Yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. So you must have been thrilled to to learn that they were going to put uh, something like this together. Absolutely. The Rise Project yeah. ticks all of the boxes that I love about yeah. book selling, about bringing people together, about working finding ideas from different communities yes. different countries what works what doesn't what are other people using that you know maybe uk booksellers could be using or us booksellers yeah. could be using yeah. we've all got something to learn from each other and this is and an eu initiative it is yeah they're funding this yeah. sort of group that yeah. uh, puts yeah. people together and i feel really 
grateful mm. uh, for them yeah. for including the UK booksellers after it. Brexit. It, yeah. It's uh, yeah. it's been wonderful. There've been so many UK booksellers here. You know, our organisations. You know, people like me invited. Yeah. It's yes, it's it's wonderful. They're so yeah. really lovely to see. Um, it's been a, just a brilliant weekend. Okay, I can't leave without just you talking to you a bit about your acting career. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't call it a as, career. As if, you, as if you're not doing enough already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, please tell me about that. Okay, so similar to reading, actually, I, I did nothing until I was 30. I used to act a lot when I was a child, and, and my dad was an actor in okay. community theatre and political theatre and things. Right. And my dad died when I was very young, 13. So it was, Sorry, all, it was in my blood, yeah. and I saw an advert, so, so I didn't do anything, and then I saw an advert when I was about... How old was I, actually? I might have been a bit older than 30, but something... No, I was older than that. I was about 35. Okay. Uh, saw an advert in uh, Norwich, just on a lamppost flyer. We need a rabble, or something like that. We, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a poster. There's a local uh, queen called Boudicca. You may have heard of her, or Boudicca. Boudicca. Boudicca, yeah. yes. So, uh, she's Norfolk. Uh, so, there was an advert for a pantomime of Boudicca. Uh, and both here was all about going and slaughtering and, mm. and you know, taking over Roman towns and all mm. of this sort of stuff. Yeah. And it was very much in the style of a Monty Python kind of um, drawing, you know, it was just, it was fun. And it's a new group and, and theatre groups can often be a little bit cliquey and things. So I thought, right, mm. I'll give it a try, I'll go along mm. to the audition and maybe I'll get a part in the chorus and all that stuff. And I got a lead part and... <laughs> loved it and I've been in every production that they've done since and every production that they do is a local historical comedy musical on a big scale. And now all of our productions are always outside and free to communities. So, uh, And we regularly get crowds mm. of a thousand people come along. It's, yeah. a, it's a glorious thing. It brings Norwich together. T- talking about the history of immigration in Norwich and how it's benefited our city and that was our response to Brexit. Talking about council, uh, commun- um, social housing, uh, which is on our show now. Talking about, this was the hardest show we did, this was a professional show actually, um, fathers, their dealings with social services and, and losing their children or going through the prison services. Uh, and that got commissioned by we performed it in prisons and um, <laughs> and in the u- university and things. But yeah, the big the big Wembley moment I call it, right. uh, which might not translate. Um, but basically, you get to perform in your you know your most special place. We entered a competition that the Royal Shakespeare Company was running to to if you know the Midsummer Night's Dream and Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, there's a local theatre group in it yeah, and we were the uh, the mechanicals uh, so we we got through the stages of the audition and we uh, we performed in our local big theatre it's 2000 seater theatre I think for a week and then we performed at Stratford upon Avon which is the mm. mecca of yeah. the theat- oh, well certainly Shakespeare it was uh, life changing actually because it was on the back of that production that my, that uh, I got my job back at Bertrand's. That was sort of happening at the same time. So you returned to books and acting. Yeah. Well, the acting had already started, but yes, right. yeah, sure. roughly. Okay. Certainly, that that big thing gave me the confidence to do all the the presentations that I did with Bertrand's and going talking now. Like I would have been too tongue tied to have um, to have talked to you. Is like that this. right? I think so. Yeah. I don't. I I think I got all of my confidence back. Um, huh. when I started performing again. Yeah. Wow. Definitely, definitely. Getting involved in that is so mm. good for your uh, it whole is. Yeah. being. It's good, good for the soul, definitely. Right. And that's what we're trying to translate into our bookshop as well, because our bookshop, we always wanted a performance space. We always wanted to bring books to life. Our tagline is where books live, and it's it's about live, you know, living books being you know creating an atmosphere for children to discover books where they don't feel like they can't touch a book and they can't you know they can't have fun 
So it's place. a children's bookstore, is it? Well, <laughs> so we are uh, we're actually up for children's bookseller of the year this year. <laughs> um, what's the name? What's the name of it again? Book Bugs and Dragon Tales. Yeah, it's got to yeah. be a kids' store. There is a rem- there is a three D model you can walk around if you go to our website. <laughs> so uh, it, yeah, on the face of it, we're a children's bookstore that works really well for us with schools and teachers and lots of people want to work with us. Uh, but we're sixty percent children's, forty percent grown up so it's even with that name yeah yeah, yeah. okay so you, you have to fight against that because yeah. people like I might not have gone to the no, new store absolutely if I didn't know that. it is a battle we right. often we hear people walk past oh that's a lovely children's yeah. bookshop and they think there's nothing in there for them and the, the grown up books are in our basement so it's that's another hurdle that does make it difficult difficult because a children's book might be five ninety nine, six ninety nine, seven ninety nine in the UK yeah so we're not selling the big thirty pound hardbacks or the anything like that or even I mean our our fiction does really well and our crime does really well, but you know there is definitely our worst performing area of the shop, but we make up for it in the other areas so it's it's all right. Anything else you want to say about what Edelweiss does for the oh. ecosystem? Or? <laughs> well, I've only told you two bits. We have a mailing system called 360. Right. So using all of the information I've already told you about, we make yeah. it really easy to go, right, I want that book in this mailing. I want to send it to the people who buy my grown-up books or the people who buy, I, you know, there's a new Richard Osman out. I want to send it to those people. Okay. You can really target mail people, and it's a bookshop system. That's amazing publisher side we've got a designer tool so we take all of the publisher data and then we let them move around create you know like a printable catalog the the bookstore yeah. so th- so they can have it in their store not necessarily it could be uh you want to sell to uh agents or you or you are an agent and you want to create a document for your you know for your clients or it could be uh, what, do you, what do you mean agent an agent uh, a book agent a, a book uh, yeah uh, like a, an author agent. So a literary agent. Yeah, literary agent, sorry, yes. Okay, so what's that again? What is a literary agent? No, no, I'm okay with that Okay, one. so what designer uh, it has all of the publisher data that Edelweiss has. Right. Um, and in designer, you can uh, use that data to say, right, I want the jacket there, I want the blurb there, I want the price there, maybe I want the barcode, maybe I want the inside pages down the bottom, maybe I want it to spread uh, uh, over two or three pages. For my author. Yeah, for, yeah, it could be. Yeah. I, mean, it I don't be know for... of any examples of people oh, okay, okay. using it that way, but certainly publishers use it that way to sell rights to you know, countries yeah, where, yeah. Uh, where their book currently isn't published. So they're giving you their catalogue, but they're also... Using it in many other ways, yeah. Yeah, okay. and we give them lots of tools to pinpoint data. If we, there's a system in the UK called Thema where you can say, "I want to find a book set in Birmingham in the 1920s with a LGBTQ character in it," and it will do that sort of thing as well. It's really powerful. Okay. That needs to be adopted in America actually, because they're still using mostly BISAC in America, I believe. By, there is a category system. Yeah, um, and yeah, there's some really clever stuff going on with um, the new form of categorization, where you can you can do ridiculous things like show me every book that's in a Bauhaus theme uh, style, rather you know show me every book they designed that with a book that's got that design on it, yeah. so I yeah. can so yeah, I can yeah. fill my fill section. yourself, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. It's really clever the way it. it can let you splice around the data. We've got a community section where you can build lists in genres, and this is actually where our conversation began, I believe. Uh, so any book lover can go in and use the community section, create a list of books, have it upvoted, downvoted within the community that you want, or share the community wider, or join a genre community where anybody can come in and say, right, I love true crime. So show me some great true crime and we'll upvote and downvote and maybe there's a downloadable copy of it because we do that as well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of information to absorb, <laughs> Dan, but, uh, but, uh, but, but that, that is, it's really good to know about it, what's it, going on here. <laughs> everything we do, I believe, is being done for the best 
to better the book industry and, and that's yeah. why I love working for them because right. that's where my heart yeah, yes. began uh, and uh, and that's why I asked them for a job and, and I'm just delighted that the UK team is now growing one of our booksellers at our bookshop is now joining uh, me in my office for half of the week publishers are now all on mostly on in the UK as well you know there's a few <laughs> resistance still that are doing their own thing but um, but they're they're getting on board um, and that's been a great thing for me to to now be able to talk to publishers whereas most of my book selling life has been talking to booksellers yes, and yeah. getting this whole other side how they're working and what their needs are and I, I love that because yeah. you don't want to stand still, you know. No, you're broadening your not understanding yeah. of the, the book exactly. world. Yeah. yeah, and there's there's still huge portions I don't understand, like literary agents, for instance. Right, right. Like, you know, there's the rights. I don't really understand how that works. You know, there are parts of the industry that I... Oh, I don't even know if I'd want to know more about them. But I, uh, <laughs> I know that there are, you know, huge gaps, for instance. Yeah. You know, I go to the London Book Fair and yeah, it's or, coming or up Frankfurt. Next month, it is, yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait. Um, but I, you know, Frankfurt is a really good example. I thought I didn't think, but there was something in my mind that just saw UK book covers all the time and uh, and obviously American book covers all the time. And then so I went to Frankfurt and there's mm. 15 halls of different nations displaying their books and every one you go in the German hall and their books are just stunning and beautiful and, and you just want them all obviously I wouldn't be able to read them <laughs> but you know and then the French different style again and the Italians and I just I suppose I knew that that was a thing because of, of the the difference in the UK and the, the mm. Americans mm. but it it's not until you're there it's not until you see it and you're in it that you really start to appreciate the vastness of the book world really well uh want to thank you i i before i do that though i'm going on this new tangent or at least this i want to know it's because of you've been in the business and it's such a such a wonderful business mm. you've chosen this field and that i think was very wise uh, in terms of life advice, what's the best advice you can give your five kids? Well, it, it, choosing something that makes you happy is... is you, the, you spend most of your time either working or thinking about your work. And that's got to make you happy. It's, it's yeah. got to be something that fills your heart, I think. Because, because money in your pocket, it does help, but... It's it's not what life is about as far as this 47-year-old man has decided. I mean, what do I know, really? But it's not... I've I've been very lucky. Because I, did, I didn't choose it, really. I it, it, it chose me. The bookshop we chose, you know, we made a conscious decision to that was our future. And my wife gave up a really successful teaching career doing to do it. Uh, and I'm forever grateful to her because she... She did, you know, she's given up a lot and she adores it. She absolutely mm, adores so, it. And so she's, but she's got yeah. all of the stress of running mm -hmm. a business mm -hmm. uh, and I get to swan off and, you know, earn a wage. But every day you know. there's something that makes her absolutely ecstatic with what she does. And, and, and she's getting, actually, she's getting opportunities now. She's talking to 70 universities in a couple of weeks about raising aspirations for the working class kids that I've just been talking about that we came from you know she's she's so she's getting opportunities because she runs a bookshop that 20 years of being a brilliant teacher didn't give her but in education yeah. it's it's crazy like the opportunities that arise from from what we do and and they don't all pay any mortgage but they certainly um yeah make you happy well, uh, you're making me happy. You've made me <laughs> happy. What, a, what an excellent uh, conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you for asking me. What a lucky, what a nice um, end to the week. Very good. Yeah. Dan Frid is the client success manager for Europe for Edelweiss, building a better book world. Thanks again for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Great stuff.